Welcome to the Daily Tanya. Uh, today is Monday, the 18th day of Sivan. We will learn today the lesson for yesterday, the 17th day of Sivan. And today, let's begin with Tzedakah, Gedele Tzedakah, Shemukarev, Sesa Geula. Tzedakah brings Mashiach closer. So, and yesterday, we started chapter 6 in Shar HaYichud Ve'emuna. After we explained the last chapter, chapter 5, and the Rebbe spoke about the godly revelation, the flashes of revelation in this dark world. Spoke about the tzaddikim, the righteous people, the holy people, that they bring out like a flash of godliness in this world. The miracles that we see in the Torah and so on. In this chapter, the Alter Rebbe goes on back to what he discussed in chapter 4, about the name uh, Vaya and Elohim. That Hashem uses these names to create the world. Our sages tell us the names of God, we have many different names of God, and the names describe Hashem uh, uh, based on what the function, the, the way Hashem acts, the way Hashem functions. So the name Havaya, the Yud, the Hei, the Vav, and the Hei, the Tetragrammaton, represents God's uh, God's eternity and God's creative power. God, the way He's above time, the power of creating something from out of nothing. The end that the, represents the concept of the attribute of chesed, the kindness, the giving, endless giving. The name Elohim, now we say with a hey, him, but I say of course Elohim because we don't want to say God's name in vain. So the name Elohim represents the restriction, the condensing, the filtering, the blocking of the light because if, our, if the light would have been without any filtering, we wouldn't be able to exist. So it is like the light of the sun. The light that comes out of the sun has a separate entity, an existence of a, the sun light. But when this light is in the sun itself, it doesn't have a separate existence. It's completely nullified within the sun itself. So here, you need to have the, the Elohim, the, the constricting power, the power that Hashem, the way Hashem works in, in confining and filtering, so to speak, this energy, the godly energy, so that we can exist as separate entities. So at least in our perspe- per, uh, perception, it will be, we will be considered as separate entities. Another example Rabbi Steinzel says, um, he says, think about when you walk in the middle of the night and you see the, the moonlight. Where is the moonlight coming from? Obviously from the sun. And you enjoy the moonlight and you can do many things by the moonlight. Well, we live in a city, we don't know, we can't appreciate it that much. But when you go outside of the city, you see the moonlight especially when there's a full moon, you see the light of the moon. But what happens in the middle of the day when the sun shines? The moonlight doesn't exist. You can see the moon sometimes during the day, but the moonlight doesn't exist. It's nullified. And so the darkness really reveals the moonlight. Now, the Rebbe goes on to, in this chapter to explain that the same thing is with creation. He says, the name Elohim also has a numerical value of 86. If you add up the, each Hebrew letter has a numerical value, and adds up to 86. There's another word, Hateva, which means the nature also adds up to 86. And now sages tell us, when certain words have similar numerical values, they have a connection. 
obviously you cannot come up now with making your own com uh, combination of numerical values of words because you have to know what the the roots when the mean the, the actual connection there which also expresses itself in numerical values so here the word hateva the nature represents the concept of elokim because that's exactly what nature does nature the nature of the world the world looks like it everything works in a natural system and everything is it, it conceals the godliness that, that is behind it but here the Rebbe goes on and says that but the bottom line is that Elohim is just as a creative power just as Avaya just like the Avaya the giving is part of the creation part of the giving the constricting the limiting is also part of the giving it is the gevura which is included in the chesed the judgment the restrictive that, uh, that is included and in the kindness so ultimately when you see night when you see uh restrict restrictive powers you can see you find you look and you realize that this is really a godly revelation except that comes to you in such a way so that you can accept it and see and feel yourself as a separate entity otherwise you wouldn't be existing in this world and that is the point that we need where the Torah tells us you should know today Take it to your heart. Ki Avaya, who Elokim? That Avaya, that name that represents Hashem's endless giving. This is Elokim. This Elokim is also part of this. Also, the giving, the restrictive is also part of that power of giving of Hashem. Let's inside what Alter Rebbe says. Chapter six and Shar Yichud Ve'Amuna. Now the name Elohim is the name which indicates the attributes of Gevura and Tzimtzum, restrictive and contraction. Hence it is also numerically equal to Hateva, nature. Which equals eighty six. For it, the divine name Elohim conceals the supernal light that brings the world into existence and gives it life. So the supernal light constantly creates the world ex nihilo or something from nothing it has to be a constant creation as we explained in the previous chapters because something that is creating something out of nothing must constantly be, be created a fit more wondrous than the splitting of the red sea the divine name elohim however conceals this light so that it will not be visible to created beings and it appears as though the world exists without having to be constantly renewed as if permanent, permanently programmed and is conducted according to the laws of nature independently of any superna supernatural influence that's what that's what nature does it conceals that this godly power the word teva, which means nature, comes also from the word madbeya. Madbeya means a coin, like like like, like you said, the, the expression there is it is coin, the set thing, it doesn't change. Or another meaning of the word teva, which means nature, comes also from the word tubu, which means like tubu beyamsuf, it is sunk in the Red Sea. The sinking represents something which is concealed, that's covered with water, and you don't see it. So the nature is has this this 
uh, effect of concealing the true godliness, the true life. Continues the Alter Rebbe and says, V'shem elokim zeh, u'mogin v'natek l'shem avaya. And this name elokim, not as it exists in its eternal source, but as it acts through the attribute of Gevura, so that the world appears to be conducted in a natural manner. This name Elohim is a shield and a sheath for the name Havaya. As we said before, the Havaya is the creative, uh, the power of creation, of bringing things into existence, and the Elohim conceals that. Concealing the light and life force that flows from the name Havaya and brings creation into existence from not. This being the purpose of Havaya. The name itself meaning to bring into existence. This light and life force is concealed by Elohim. Shaloi so that it should not be revealed to the creatures, which would thereby become absolutely nullified. If the godliness would be revealed as is, we wouldn't be able to exist. That's why you need a looking. So therefore, says the Alter Rabbi, This quality the quality of this Gevura and Tzimtzum is also an aspect of Chesed through which the world is built. The world is built with kindness. Part of the kindness is also this con- uh, limitations. Zoi Bechinas Gevura Aklulu Bechesed And this is the quality of Gevura which is included in chesed, included in kindness. And now we continue to today's lesson, the 18th of Sivan. Says Dalt Rebbe, the fact that these attributes of God are included from one another, that shows us that the attributes are one with Hashem. In order for two opposite attributes to be able to work together as one, the revelation and concealment, the right and the left, the fire and the water, that is, it can only work because they are really rooted in the and in the in Hashem, which is above both of them. They are one with the godliness itself. This is why it says, by example, by the plagues in Egypt, it was the, one of the plagues was the hail. So the Torah says, this was Eish Mislakachas Basechabod, it was fire in the water itself. So this is the, our sages explain that this is, there was the angel of fire and angel of water. They really don't go along. They extinguish one another. But yet Hashem, Hashem made peace between them. They work for the same boss. And they realize when it comes to, when, when their root is revealed within them, they no longer contradict and conflict with one another. They work jointly. So the creation of the world is also a joint effort of both elements of godly revelation, the element of revelation, the element of concealment, in order to bring this world to existence. Continues the From the mutual inclusion of the attributes, their opposite nature notwithstanding, it is evident that he and his causations Meaning his attributes are one. For since they are in complete unity with him, they therefore unite with each other and are comprised of each other. 
And this is, says the Alter Rebbe, we say it, it says in the Zohar, something we read every Friday, some people read it every day in the Pasach Aliyo, Kemaimer Aliyo, as Aliyo said, Ve'ant hu de kosher loin, umiyachid loin v'chulu, uba minoch, ulei sichud abe lo yechulu. As Aliyo said in the passage beginning Pasach Aliyo, in the introduction to the Tikkun Zohar, and you are he who binds them, meaning the spheres and the attributes, binds them together and unites them. And apart from you, there is no unity among those attributes above. That's what Alter Rebbe says. This is, it goes back to the verse that he began, the Shah Yichud Ve'emunah Ve'etera says, this is what we need to take to heart to understand this concept, that the world is all Hashem. And for Hashem, everything is nullified. We are not existing only in our eyes. And in order for Hashem, for us to feel existing, Hashem uses both the Avaya and Elohim, the revelation and concealment. This then is the meaning of the scriptural phrase, and take it unto your heart that Avaya is Elohim. Pirush, which means a shnei shemes elo im echad mamash. That is, that these two names are actually one, meaning although Avaya represents chesed, kindness, the giving, and revelation, and Elkim represents simtum, the contraction and concealment, they are nevertheless truly one. Shegam sheim elokim ametzamtzim umalim oiru p'chinas chesed k'moi sheim avaya. For even the name elokim, which conceals and contracts the light of the divine life force that is responsible for creation, this is a, this is a quality of chesed, quality of kindness, just like the name avaya. Mishum shemidoisav shalakadosh baruch hu misyachadis imoi v'yichud gamu. For the attributes of the Holy One, blessed be He, unite with Him in a complete unity. And He and His name are one. That's what we say in the Lenin Bayoma, Hashem will be one and His name will be one. It's all one. For His attributes are His names, meaning the attributes correspond to His specific names, Vim Cain. And since this is so, meaning once you understand that Elohim is one with Avaya, then you will know You will consequently know that in the heavens above and on the earth below, there exists nothing else besides God. Because everything, that symptom is also God. The contraction is also godliness. It's like to say, you cannot conceal yourself with yourself. You conceal yourself from others, not yourself from yourself. One of the interesting, there's a lacha that says when you say, um, when you say, uh, you're supposed to cover your head with something in order to say something, uh, of Torah, of prayers, right? Of course, he spoke about con- covering the head in general is a big thing, that, but that's a separate point. But in any case, the law says, what happens if you don't have a, something to put on your head? Can you cover yourself to put your hand on your head? And that doesn't help. If you have somebody else put his hand on your head, it will help. It's considered covering. But you cannot cover yourself, your head, with your own hand because this is part of you. You don't cover yourself with yourself. So Hashem, everything is Hashem. Hashem cannot, from Hashem, nothing is concealed from, from Hashem Himself. So God's presence is everywhere. But He created this contraction and filtering of the light so that we, we, it will be considered for us like a separate entity. It's concealed for us. 
continues the Alter Rebbe and says, Piru Shegama Oretz Achumris, Shenireis, Yeish Gomor Le'en Koel, I'ayin ve'efes Mamash Le'gabe Kadosh Dolchot. This Hebrew phrase means what we just said, that uh, Hashem is above, that in heavens above and the earth below, there's nothing else. This, phrase, this Hebrew phrase means that even the material earth, which appears to everyone's eyes to be actually existing, is not an utter nothingness in relation to the Holy One, Blessed Be because the concealment is only for us. For the name Elohim obscures and contracts the light and life force only for the nether creatures, so that they perceive themselves as possessing independent existence. But not for the Holy One, blessed be He, since he and his name, Elohim, are one. Hence, the name Elohim cannot possibly act as a concealment for him. Therefore, even the earth and that which is below it are not an utter nothingness in relation to the Holy One, Blessed Be. Not only is it uh, utter nothingness, it's not even considered uh, something else, an, a, a, a subordinate status. And that's what the idea it says, Ein Od. Ein Od means there's nothing else. Ein Od also means there's nothing which is secondary. Od is also something like Subordinate, secondary, not even secondary thing. And not called by any names at all, not even by the name Od, else, which would indicate a subordinate status. As in the statement of our sages, the blessed memory, Yehuda Va'od Likra. There's a verse in the Torah requires secondary substantiation. Uh, subst- uh, subst- uh, subst- so basically what this is, this is in the Talmud. The Talmud talks about uh, a certain law regarding marriage. If a person said something instead of using the usual um the usual paragraph of marrying use something else so the the talmud brings him a verse whether this is okay or not and then they said you know what else they you and there's also you should know that in the in the in judea they use this language so basically and the Talmud says, do you need something additional? Yehuda va'od likra. You have a clear verse in the Torah about this, uh, in regarding this law. So why do you need to bring something additional? The point what the Alter Rebbe brings here, this, uh, this statement is to explain that the word od, Hashem, ein od, is nothing else, also means secondary, like uh, subordinate. So in any, case, in any case, so the point is, we does see that the term odd signifies secondary status. So when it comes to the body and soul, for example, being that a soul, the body doesn't come from the soul, but the body is certainly secondary to the soul. It is odd for the soul. When we're talking about a person, what is the real uh, person, the personality of the person is the soul. Whatever your, your whatever the, the soul gives, what kind of life the soul gives you, what the, your person is a musician, is, is a person, is a human being, is thinking, is speaking, 
That's all the soul. The body is secondary to the soul. This too is the case with the body, which is subordinate to the soul and life force within it, for which reason it is referred to as Od. And this explains this the Alter Rebbe, interesting verse in the Tehillim. It says, I will praise Avaya with my life. I will sing to Elokai, to my Elohim, the Odi with my Od. So as we said, the life is the soul, and the Od is the body. So it says the body praises Havaya. Havaya is the, 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 the source of life. And praise Elohim, the, which conceals the, the Havaya, is the Odi with my body. Just like the body conceals also the soul. And that's what it says. Is the meaning of the verse? I will praise Avaya with my life, meaning with my soul. I will sing to Elokai, my Lord, beodi with my body. So we thus see that the body is termed odd in as much as it is uh, subservient to the soul. The reason the term Elokai is used in connection with the body. But the body's song is this. Why? For life, the soul is derived from the name Avaya, and the Od, which is the body, it's, it's uh, subordinate from the name Elohim. Why? For the soul does not bring the body into existence, something from nothing, and only provides it with life. The body is therefore called odd, meaning it is secondary to the soul, in as much as it is the soul that provides the body with life. But when we're talking about Hashem creating the world, everything is comes from Hashem, something from nothing. But as to the Holy One, blessed be He, who brings everything into existence, ex nihilo, everything is absolutely nullified in relation to Him, just as the light of the sun is absolutely nullified in the sun. And that is why, this is the end of today's shir, it explains this beautiful concept that really, really everything is Hashem. That is why there is the concept of a saying, and God forbid something bad happens, a person says, Baruch Atah Hashem Dayana Emet, thanking Hashem, the truth judge. We say praise to Hashem. Baruch Atah Hashem. We say praise to Hashem for bringing day. We say praise to Hashem for bringing night. Because ultimately, everything is, is good. And of course, the bottom line is we want to be able to see the good. We're asking Hashem to have only revealed good. And we should be able to see the goodness that is hiding. Ultimately, that will come very soon with the coming of Mashiach. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you with Hashem tomorrow.